Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to discuss my 2019 reading stats and to do a reading survey of how my reading went in 2019. I hope that you're not tired of these videos on booktube yet because here's another one. So first I wanted to get through kind of the stats part of it and then I wanted to do the reading survey that I saw on Books and Lala's channel. The first thing we'll talk about is how many books that I read this year. Uh, Goodreads says that I read 143 books and 36,000, more than 36,000 pages. That's not really on par with what's on my uh, Google Drive that I keep my own like Excel sheet on there, but we're just gonna go with what Goodreads says. It's not perfect, but yeah, that sounds about right to me. I always feel like I have to like say up front, like I read a lot of middle grade, I read a lot of graphic novels and comics, um, and therefore that makes it seem like I read more than I do. But, I mean, it's dumb. A book is a book, and I've read 143 books. A lot more than I read last year. Almost twice as much as I read last year. It's the most that I've ever read since I've started doing Goodreads challenges, and that goes back to 2015. So, something happened this year that I read a lot. I did not make a lot of content on here, um, but I did read a lot. P.S. For all of you that actually watched my Vlogmas videos, Thanks, that's nice. I got to day 19 and I had a lot of fun doing it. I thought 19 videos was pretty good. I had a lot of nice conversations with you guys in the comments. Uh, some people left my channel. Goodbye. It was nice knowing you. Hopefully to you like it was to me, it was just like a, a weird, interesting, different experiment from me. I've never uploaded that much in like that short of a period of time. Bothered some people, but it was something different to try out for me. So I wanted to talk about the breakdown of what I read. Um, the most important thing to me is always my nonfiction and fiction divide. And sadly, this year, to me, I <laughs> it's sad to me, I only read 39% nonfiction. And my goal that I said during nonfiction November was that I really wanted it to be 50-50 because in 2018, my reading was split exactly 50-50 fiction, nonfiction, and I just love that. That didn't happen this year. I just didn't have the, the same nonfiction November that I've had in years past. I just didn't didn't get to read that much nonfiction during nonfiction November, which was kind of sad. I don't know what happened th that month. And then all of December, I pretty much just read fiction for that program that I have coming up. So lots of middle grade fiction books instead. So it didn't happen, but I think 39% nonfiction is still pretty good. As for the audience of the books that I read, my reading took a big turn this year, um, and I read 47% kids books. A lot of that had to do with that program that I mentioned. I read a lot of those books last January, then I did middle grade March, and then I started reading those, uh, the new books for this next cycle of the program in December instead of next, you know, in January. That added a lot to it. I also did a lot of readings from book lists um, during the summertime when I was doing um, school visits right before school got out. So I just read a lot of middle grade and a lot of kids books in general. That meant that my adult reading was only 34% and my young adult reading was 19%. I kind of want to change that up a little bit next year. I don't know how yet, so I'm still thinking about that. As for the format. This I also really enjoy looking at. 50% of my reading was on audiobook this year. This has also been the year, this year and last year has been the year where I've really seen that change in myself. It's basically the only propulsion I have, like the momentum I have to finish a book these days. It's very hard for me to start a book like in print and like just come home from work and just read a few hours a night and then finish the book in a few nights. It's just not, that doesn't work for me and I really need the audiobook to keep me going. And that's also why I, I feel like I read a lot this year is because I got through a lot of pages listening on audiobook. That means that print, and I like to divide print and print for graphic novels, was only 13% and print graphic novels, which means comics of any sort with pictures, was 36%. I just like dividing that up because I very, very heavily I mean, I exclusively only read graphic novels in print. I don't remember the last time I've read it on like a tablet. And then for ebook, I barely got 1%. I probably read like two books on ebook this year. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was ratings. I don't really talk about ratings when I review books on booktube. I don't say like I gave it four out of five or whatever, but I basically did six and six for five and 4.5 stars. And I did so many four stars, like 
50 plus. My catch-all rating of 3 and 3.5 was also pretty heavy, but I found it really fascinating how many four-star books I had this year. All right, now let's go back to the questions and this will lead us to our genre talk. So for genre, the question is what is your most read genre for 2019? And for me, it was realistic fiction with 22% and then memoir came in second with 16.5%. And this is very much on par with my reading in previous years. That is what I like to read. I like to read things grounded in real life and I like to read from people's experiences. I'm always really impressed and uh, kind of surprised by how much fantasy I read when I don't seek out fantasy at all, but it's almost 10%. It's like 10.5% of my reading this past year and I feel like it's that way every year. I'm a little bit surprised by it. And I guess I do read a lot of books that have like fantasy elements um, that are still sort of grounded in real life. They have kind of like magical realism, that kind of vibe to them where they're not like explicitly like high fantasy, but it still always surprises me to see that number. That leads us to my favorite book of the year. This was a very good experiment for me to, I like wrote down all the things that could possibly be in the running for my favorite book of the year. Then I divided them by being graphic books, by being fiction and nonfiction, and I think I'm gonna make separate videos for that. This helped me decide what is my top book of all of these three kind of ways I divide my books. And from fiction, nonfiction, graphic fiction, graphic nonfiction, my favorite book of the year, I want to say, is Good Talk by Mira Jacob. It's one that I've been mentioning the past few months. I feel like more people are hearing about it as well I and mean, it's making me think back to it too. It's one that took me a little bit longer to read than usual graphic works but it's one that made me think a lot and that made me like it so much. So that leads us to my least favorite book of the year and this without a doubt is The Night Olivia Fell by Christina McDonald. It is a book that I read off of NetGalley and that was one of my you know, things I wanted to do last year at the beginning of the year is to read more ARCs to review upcoming things. I don't know, I feel like the way that NetGalley talks about books and like blurbs books makes you feel like super excited about them and you think that it's gonna be super super good. And I read this book and I hated it! It was so bad. I like thrillers, I like psychological sort of mysteries, I like unreliable narrators and problematic characters, uh, characters that make bad decisions, but Mm, this book was just real bad and I think I just have to check that all up to the writing. The writing was atrocious. Like I laughed out loud reading this book and I'm sorry to like stomp on it but it, it was that kind of a book. I would not recommend it. My most disappointing book of the year, I have four and I, I really couldn't, it was like seven and I brought it down to four. I want to say I am Alfonso Jones which was a graphic um, novel that I was really interested in. It has to do with Black Lives Matter and I just could not understand the allegory that it was going with. It wanted to use like Shakespeare to kind of explain this and there was ghosts and stuff and it just confused me honestly. I also put White Fragility on this list which I've already talked about. I think I talked about it in my mid-year book freakout tag. Just not good considering all of the other books of this sort that I have read. This one was pale in comparison. It was just not, could not live up to my expectations. I also put Made on here which is another very disappointing book. Someone recently commented on my video something about me not understanding Made and the author's you know, background and issues. Sorry, I just didn't like that book. I didn't understand why we were just being kept at arm's reach so far away from really truly understanding the author and what she went through. I was disappointed by that book. I really expected it to reach the levels of evicted and um, educated and it just, it didn't. It did not. And I also put on here She Came to Slay. I feel like I am just not a fan of this author because I tried to read her other nonfiction book that she put out a couple years ago. I just don't get on with the writing. I feel like the writing always supposes too much, like was thinking this or must have been feeling this when there's no like historical text or historical like evidence to you know back that information up. And I really hate when history books do that, when they try to put feelings and emotions in people that are not alive to explain that, to say that to us, and that also there's no writing that somebody left to us that could, you know, back that up as true information. Next is what is the most overhyped book of the year? I put two on here, a fiction and a nonfiction. I've already talked about both, both of these I want to say, but Where the Crawdads Sing by Dela Owens is not a book for me. I'm sad, I feel like it's overhyped, I'm not part of that hype train. 
I am off the train. And for nonfiction, I put Three Women, which was a book that I was very much anticipating. I enjoy reading and I feel, always feel like I'm really interested in learning about women's experiences with their sexuality. Uh, I did not like the perspectives that we were given. I didn't like the way that it was written. I didn't really feel like we got to any conclusions. It just felt like snapshots and when this is being like marketed like it's going to explain women's sexuality in this year and age, uh, it did it for me. Especially the story about the student and her teacher. Uh, not good. The next question is, what is the most underhyped book of the year? One, you're probably going to be surprised because it is not underhyped. I just feel like it wasn't received as well. Um, not that people are giving it bad reviews, but I just feel like not enough people are reading it. And that is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. I listened to this one at the beginning of the year. Um, I mean, this book has been almost a year and I just feel like not enough people have given it a chance. I feel like a lot of people read her debut and were really impressed and just haven't picked up on the come up. So if you're looking for a realistic fiction from the perspective of a black teenager who wants to be a rapper and there's a lot of family ties and like discussions about family, I would totally recommend this book. It's a book about being true to yourself and it's probably the best YA book that I read this year. I also wanted to put two um, graphic novels on here, well graphic graphic memoirs I guess. One of them was the least rated thing of all of my books that I read this year. Goodreads keeps that information for you. It only had like 35 ratings in all of the world and it's to dance. It's the special edition of a book that came out more than a decade ago I want to say and it follows this ballerina and she grew up not really being in that dance world and then becoming really involved in that dance world. And it talks about being a ballerina in ways that I never really knew before about all the things that they had to do to like keep in shape, um, practice. It's just a fascinating look psychologically at what being a ballerina is like as well. And it's from the author and I believe her husband did the illustrations. I literally have not heard one other person talk about this book. I heard about it from Twitter because it was being re-released and some children's books Twitter accounts were talking about it. So. And then the other book I have on here is Surviving the City, which is from the perspective of two Native American girls. It basically discusses the violence that happens to Native women, um, more Indigenous women, and um, the psychological toll that takes on one of the friends. I just thought it was a very interesting look at all of that. It's an issue that I follow, but it's also, I don't read a lot from the perspective of Native American or American Indians, and I'm happy that I read one this year. So I'm telling you about it now. If you're into comics, I definitely recommend it. The next question is most unexpected book you loved. Um, I put three books on here. I'm just really bad at picking one, huh? The first one I put on here is Becoming Unbecoming, which is a graphic memoir and kind of graphic history of a serial killer in the UK decades ago. I want to say like in the 70s or 80s. It's also kind of the coming of age of the author talking about uh, going from being a girl to a teenage woman. Kind of how society just completely changes the way that they look at you and think about you. Just because your body is changing, you're not a girl anymore. I just loved what this had to say about gender and I felt like it was very dark but in a way that I really enjoy. I just felt like I really got into the brain of the illustrator author. Yeah, it just it blew my mind and it had that true crime kind of tinge to it that I also really enjoy in books. So it was like a a twofer for me, which I really liked. Another one I put on here is Super Potato, um, and I this is probably on nobody's radar. I literally only read it because I thought it would be similar to uh, Dogman, and I was right, and I wanted to read something like Dogman, so that when someone comes up to me and tells me, I've read all of Dogman, what do I read next? I had another recommendation for them, and this one definitely should be put on there. It is a book that I really did not expect a lot of because I've read Dogman and it's funny, but I feel like this book is funny in a way that's like meta and funny in a way that parents and older people would enjoy. The other book that I put on here that I was very unexpected how much I loved it was Tonight Owl from Dogfish and I listened to this one on audiobook. It used letters and text messages and phone calls to tell the story of these two girls that are basically forced to become sisters because their gay dads have met and want to be together and at first they're very anti getting together and being friends or sisters or anything and then they realize that yeah they really should be sisters after their gay dads break up and they try to get them back together. So it's kind of like the parent trap in that way. It takes place in a summer camp. It's just really, really 
fun, very lighthearted. I know lots of booktube people read and like Meg Wallitzer. I've never liked any of Meg Wallitzer's adult books, but this book I really, really enjoyed. I would definitely recommend it on audiobook. It's just really snarky, really funny, really silly, and it's got great friendship and great family stories to tell. The next question is longest and shortest read books. Grand Canyon, which is a middle grade nonfiction book about going to the Grand Canyon and all the animals and kind of rock features you can see there. I read and it was only 48 pages, so it's a tiny book. And then my longest book, it's not like a full novel, it's a graphic novel, and that is On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. It is one of Tilly Walden's newest books, um, one that I was kind of disappointed about, but uh, it's a quiet space saga and it has a lot of queer characters, um, so I liked the setting, I liked the characters, I just didn't really like the plot as much, and that one was 533 pages, so it was a chunker of a graphic novel. The next question is the biggest reading accomplishment you felt. I put two on here. One is Boomtown, which is a book about Oklahoma City, kind of the founding of Oklahoma City, what Oklahoma City is about now and their sports teams. It was a fascinating and like humorous look at this kind of wacky city that wants to be like New York City but can never really quite get there I guess. The reason why I put it as my biggest accomplishment was because I couldn't get it in physical copy so I read it in ebook but then it's very hard for me. I never pick up my e-reader so I was not reading it and I, I was waiting for it to come on audiobook so it just took a long process for me to get it through the format that I would really actually listen to it and finally when the audiobook came I was able to finish it but it did take me a while just because of that and I was just so happy at the end of listening to it like finally I have finished this book. And then the other book that I put on here is probably for the same reasons, although this one didn't have an audiobook version for me that was going to come in time. Like I didn't want to wait 12 more weeks to finish this book. And that's Know My Name by Chanel Miller. I exclusively read this on hardcover. It was just hard for me to pick up the book and sit down and read the thing. I probably would have been able to finish it quicker had I had the audiobook available right then and there, but I just wanted to finish the book and I didn't want to be left hanging halfway through to then return it and wait for the audiobook book so that felt like an accomplishment because it took me almost a month to get through it and it was one of those like November reads so I'm curious if because I had a hard time getting through this one book I just didn't have a good nonfiction November month in general. The next question is favorite characters. I put two. One is Red from Wish Tree, which is the last book that I read in 2019, but the one that had the spunkiest and most interesting character. Red is a tree. Red is literally an oak tree and it had the most wonderful voice out of any character that I read in all of 2019. Red felt like a warm hug. Honestly, I could never have imagined that from a tree, but it was lovely. And the other character that I put on here is a real human and that is Mia from Front Desk by Kelly Yang. This is a middle grade book that I read I want to say in May or June and it was such a sweet story but really what made this book great was the main character Mia and her talking about her immigrant family and running this hotel. She just had such a powerful voice and she was so spunky and true to herself. I just loved Mia. The next question is a book that made you cry. One book made me cry for sure like multiple times and that is The Only Plane in the Sky by Gary M. Graff. I, I mean <laughs> you can't help but cry. Tears welling up. Um, I remember kind of like weeping quietly. I remember like my throat clenching because I wanted to cry but I was telling myself like hold it back it's gonna be okay. It's just a very difficult book to read and even now just thinking about it I feel kind of emotional about it um, just because it was so raw and it was so um, vulnerable and it's honestly um, was a great learning experience for me as someone who was only eight years old when 9-11 happened. I feel sad right now. <laughs> I also put Parkland on here by Dave Cullen which was a book that made me teary-eyed just from the perspective of how um, powerless um, I feel and how I feel that the teenagers of Parkland and Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School feel how powerless um, you feel even though it's been two years almost since that happened and truly nothing has changed. So it's one of those feelings where there's so much hope and dreams from these kids and then um, you yourself reading this thinking like 
Nothing has changed and I'm so sorry about that. Let's change it up. I'm really sad now. Um, a book that made you laugh. I put two books on here. One I already mentioned is Tonight Owl from Dogfish. That book made me crack up uh, in times. And then the other book that also made me laugh out loud, which I listened to on audiobook and that probably helped, is Ben Franklin's In My Bathroom, which is a um, kind of like alternative history or like time travel history kind of thing where Ben Franklin ends up in the bathroom and house of these two siblings and all the adventures that they have and it's got a lot of like historical nuggets in it that make you laugh out loud like Ben Franklin can't believe our flushing toilets and he can't believe all the things that are happening in the 21st century so that made me laugh out loud. I always love those kind of time travel books where a character is shipped to our land now and they kind of don't understand how everything works. And finally the last question is a new favorite author. I put four because the question is one new favorite author of course and I put Debbie Tung whose graphic memoirs and comics I want to read all. I really enjoyed Quiet Girl in the Noisy World. Also Lucy Nicely I feel like cemented herself as one of my favorite authors this year with Kid Gloves. It was a fantastic graphic memoir about giving birth and how difficult that was for her and all of the troubles that she faced. I literally will read anything that she publishes. I also put Brian Feist on here who was a completely new author to me. I read two things by him this year but A Fire Story was up there. It was a great book. Another one that's kind of on par with Lucy Nicely as someone that yeah, they were like someone I liked, but not necessarily a favorite author until this year, is Catherine Applegate. Finishing Wish Tree at the end of the year, I just felt like, yeah, I've read two books by her and both my heart just grew like three sizes. I need to read everything that Catherine Applegate has written. That's kind of the feeling that I got after I finished Wish Tree. And that's it for this reading survey and um, stats. I hope that was interesting to you. Let me know in the comments any of your thoughts and I'll come back hopefully with my favorite books of the year soon, as well as some goals for next year. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.